Are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest-selling bran flakes, Post 40% bran flakes, and by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. <laughs> To most of us, opening the morning mail is a routine affair. Routine, and yet opening the mail is something more. It's a high adventure. Because sometimes the contents of the mildest looking envelope can produce a surprising chain reaction. A case in point is Jim Anderson Esquire. Post office address, the white frame house at 607 Maple Street. We find Jim at the mailbox, like this. Are those my magazines, Jim? Yes, dear. A couple of letters for Betty. Couple for Bud. That one's for me. And that one. Only one left. That's for Kathy. How about that? I had five pounds of mail when I started. <laughs> Cheer up, dear. I made a mistake. This one is for you. Hmm? It's postmarked Chicago. Now, who do I know in Chicago? You could open the letter and find out. Oh, Mr. James Anderson, 607 Maple Street, Springfield, etc., etc. Dear Bonehead. Bonehead. Hmm, the personal touch. <laughs> now I know who it's from. Chicago Association, looking forward to uh, kindest regards. Cordially, Nelson W. Bothwell, Executive Secretary. Well, that's out. Nelson W. Bothwell? Sounds impressive. No, well, I guess old Nellie's a big wheel now. Nellie? We went to school together. He's with the Underwriters Association. But we can't go. I'm going back in the house. Can't go where? Oh, thought I told you. There's an insurance underwriters convention in Chicago again this year. Old Nelly, uh, I mean Nelson, hasn't heard from me, so he took the trouble to extend a very personal invitation. Nice guy. Not when he calls my husband a bonehead. The idea. Oh, I don't know. Bonehead Anderson. <laughs> it has a nice ring to it. Jim, I know you'd love to go to Chicago. You haven't been anywhere in ages. Well, we'll go next year. But you should get away. What about you? You could use a little time off yourself. Just think of it, honey. We'll be free as birds someday. Just the two of us. Tell you what, when the kids grow up, we'll sell the house. Sell our house? Sure. We could move into a small apartment. Or maybe buy a trailer. Oh, you're joking. The heck I am. No grass to mow, no leaky roofs. Just park alongside some trout stream, drop a line, and that's dinner. Boy, that's living. Hi, Mom. Dad. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Betty. Bud. Good morning, children. I'll go fix breakfast. Father, Dad, there's, there's something, something I, I want to ask, ask you. Well, business is brisk. Okay, who's first? Shoot. I'll talk to you, Father, when Bud's finished. What's on your mind, son? Well, Dad, gosh, I, uh, well, the guys are, uh, are all going up to Beaver Lake. They're gonna camp out over the weekend. Beaver Lake, oh. A man could take a trailer up to Beaver Lake and practically live off the country. Clint Taylor's father's letting us have his station wagon. Gee, Dad, it's all arranged and the guys are counting on me. Can I go, Dad? Broil bacon over an open fire. I can even smell it. Breakfast in a minute, dear. Oh. Son, when you get a chance to camp out, don't let anybody talk you out of it. You just pick up and go. Holy cow, I didn't even have to argue. Bud seems pleased. I insisted he go up to Beaver Lake for the weekend. Insisted? Yes, he's going with the gang. It'll do him a world of good. He'd better take some warm clothes. The nights are getting cool. Well, breakfast is ready. Come and get it. Coming. Daddy. Good morning, kitten. Have some toast, Dad. Oh, boy, Beaver Lake. Any mail for me? On the living room table. And there's a letter for you, too, kitten. Oh, that must be for Maxine Turner. I'll go get it. 
Gee whiz, my own letter. May I go too, Mom? I gotta start packing. I suppose so. This breakfast is turning into a shambles anyway. Father, how do you feel about travel? Well, offhand, I'd say it's an educational experience. Meet new people, see new places. Oh, I'm so glad you approve. Frankly, Father, I expected a certain amount of resistance. Uh, you're a little ahead of me, Princess. I approve of what? Of my going to Grantsville over the weekend. The College Glee Club is going to compete in the music festival over there. It's just for the weekend. Hmm, well, this is pretty sudden. Your mother and I will have to think this over. Ralph is right. You're overprotective. I'll listen to Ralph when he has a family of his own. Well, Dean Norton and his wife will be in charge. It'll be a wonderful trip, simply dreamy. But uh, where'll you stay? Three whole days, Princess. At the sorority house. Oh, Father, this is the 20th century. I know. That's just one more thing that bothers me. <laughs> Margaret, what do you think? I'm all for it. It should be an interesting experience. Oh, Mother, you're a darling. I've got to get my things together. Betty, come back here. I haven't even told her she could go yet. Jim, you know you're going to say yes. Well, true. But I'd like the pleasure of hearing myself say it. <laughs> What's with this outfit anyway? First Bud and now Betty. Children grow up. They have their own interests. Everybody rushing off? Everybody but Father. Oh, it's not that bad. We can enjoy a nice, quiet weekend. It suits me fine. I can get in a little reading. I wish you'd get at some of those old magazines, Jim. Your den is practically a fire hazard. Well, don't give them away. I'll read them. In time. Oh, I meant to tell you, Margaret, I just subscribed to a new one. Not another magazine. Now, this one's different. It's the American Trailer. For those carefree spirits who respond to the lure of the open road. The open road? Jim, you haven't been 20 miles from Springfield since the day you fell asleep on the bus and woke up at the end of the line. You see, it's like I've been saying all along. Beneath this drab exterior beats the restless heart of a wanderer, a nomad, a... A, a hobo? I prefer to think of myself as a free soul. A man who struck off the shackles of care and responsibility. Where's Kathy? Kathy, where are you? Here I am, Daddy. I was reading my letter. It was from Maxine. <laughs> Little Kathy. At least she hasn't flown the nest. Who's Maxine? She's my friend. We're true blue pals. We've got secrets. That's nice. Maxine sent me an invitation. She wants me to be your house guest for the weekend. For Pete's sake, this is turning into an exodus. Where does Maxine live? Two blocks from here. <laughs> She's my friend. We're two blue pals. I know. You've got secrets. <laughs> if there's anything funny about this, Margaret, I'm afraid the humor escapes me. Bud and Betty can go anywhere they want to. But, Kitten, you're only a little girl. I don't care. I want to go away, too. Uh, you reason with her, Margaret. What's hit this family, anyway? Are you sure, Angel, that you want to spend a whole weekend with Maxine? She's my friend. We're true blue pals. Damon and Pythias. <laughs> Harry and Bess. <laughs> Now, Kathy and Maxine. I want to be a house guest. Maxine invited me. And she's your friend. Jim. But, Kathy, you've never spent a night away from home. They only live two blocks down the street. And Mrs. Turner is so nice, Mommy. Kathy, I want you to think before you answer. Are you sure you want to go? Sure, I'm sure. Gee whiz. Well, let her go, Margaret. Oh, boy, I'm going to be a house guest. i got to go pack my thing. Even Kathy can't get out fast enough. What are we, Margaret, a couple of Simon Legrees? It's just the idea of the change, the excitement of it all. A house guest, two blocks down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's funny. <laughs> but, Margaret, look at it this way. An hour ago, we had three children. Mm, Betty, Bud, and Kathy. And what have we got now? 
a second alto with a college glee club, a boy camper at Beaver Lake, and a little girl who wants to leave home to become a house guest. What kind of talk is that for a wanderer, a, a nomad, a... Maybe I have been the heavy parent, honey. Hey, wait a minute. That makes it perfect. Made to order. Uh, I'm afraid, Jim, I don't follow. Margaret, you're not thinking. What's to stop us from going now? Going where? To the convention, of course, over the weekend. Jim, all the way to Chicago? Why not? The kids will be gone. There's nothing to keep us here. Oh, that's true, but... Margaret, when opportunity knocks, don't complain about the noise. Get a hammer and help the man beat down the door. <laughs> Could it be that father is taking his responsibilities as head of the family too lightly? Well, that remains to be seen. On the other hand, I know something every mother takes seriously, the family's breakfast. So let's talk about that a moment. You've probably known all along that bran is good for you because it contains important keep regular benefits. Maybe you've tried bran only to find you weren't too keen about the taste. Well, things are different now. Something wonderful has happened to bran. The Post Cereals people have given Post 40% Bran Flakes a wonderful new flavor. A magic oven flavor and crisp texture that's really delicious. And I'm not just saying that. Lots of people have tried the new Post 40% Bran Flakes and found that they like it better than any other cereal. You can serve new Post Bran Flakes with its ounce of prevention, its important keep regular benefits, and know that the family will get these vital extras in a cereal they'll really enjoy. Doesn't that tell you that Post Bran Flakes is the cereal to serve in your home? I hope so. For goodness sake, eat Post Bran Flakes. So good and so good for you. When you do your weekend shopping, buy new Post 40% Bran Flakes. They're America's largest selling Bran Flakes. They're good and so good for you. There have been many mass migrations in history, and now with these mass movements must be ranked the weekend exodus of the Andersons. Betty's going on a trip with a college glee club, Bud's getting ready for a camping expedition, and Kathy's little friend has invited her to be a house guest. That leaves Jim and Margaret, who are taking advantage of their new freedom, to make a trip of their own to Chicago. Naturally, all this requires preparation, like this. Anybody seen my wool socks? Hey, shrimp. What are you looking at me for? What would I do with your old socks? Last year, you cut holes in my argyles and pulled them over your head for a Halloween mask. <laughs> Gee whiz, I was little then. Now I'm gonna be a house guest. Maxine's my friend, my true blue pal. We've got secrets. Murder. <laughs> Bud. The house guest? Try that suitcase. She's got her head in it. I'm packing. Let me see that bag. I thought so. My new silk scarf. Mother! What is it, Betty? This time I caught her red-handed. Bud's my witness. Margaret, where are you? In the living room, dear. Now, one at a time. Mom, have you seen my wool socks? What we need around here is a little organization. Mother, she's simply got to keep her hands off my things. Your mother has enough to do without keeping track of your things and settling your petty arguments. I don't mind, Jim. I'm almost packed. Are you going somewhere, Mother? I'll say she is. Your father and I are going to Chicago for the weekend. We're going to take in the convention, do the town, live in riotous splendor for three whole days. Good for you. Gee, Dad, that's swell. I'd rather be a house guest. I know. Maxine's your friend. <laughs> Let me help you pack, Kathy. I'm finished, and I did it all by myself. Well, now, Kathy, I want you to be a good little girl, polite and considerate at all times. Oh, I will, Mommy, I will. Have you got a handkerchief? A clean one? Sure. See, two. My new linen handkerchiefs. This is the end. Oh, let her have them, Betty. After all, she's a house guest. <laughs> Say goodbye to your mother, Kathy, and I'll walk you down. I'm a big girl. I can go by myself. Well... Dad, it's only two blocks. Short ones. 
Oh, I'll get it. It's probably for me. Hello? Who? Oh, Kathy. It's for me. <laughs> Excuse me. Big stuff. She got a phone call. <laughs> Maxine, I'm all packed. I was just leaving. How about that, Margaret? She wants to go alone. It's only two short blocks. That child is getting completely out of hand. It's the wild, younger generation. <laughs> well, she's certainly striking out for herself, and at a pretty tender age. I must admit, dear, she seems quite the young lady. She seems so casual, so detached. Mm. I think she's disgustingly calloused. I'm going now. Maxine's waiting. Aren't you even going to say goodbye? Sure. Goodbye, Mommy. Goodbye, Daddy. So long, Marco Polo. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Gee whiz, I'm leaving. Here's your suitcase. Mm, thanks, Betty. I'll take good care of your handkerchiefs. The door's that way, traveler. Well, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Daddy, Mommy, I'm homesick. <laughs> Holy cow, and she isn't even out of the house. <laughs> there, there, there. Kathy, Angel, give me your handkerchief. I don't want to leave you and Daddy. Of course. Now blow like a good girl. <laughs> My new linen handkerchiefs. Some traveler. I thought Maxine was her friend. Her true blue pal. Cut it out, you two. Well, there goes our trip to Chicago. Uh, I'm afraid so, dear. Kathy, honey, let's go to your room. We'll go next year for sure. Bud. Yes, Dan? Get the bags out of the car, will you? Okay. Women. Even the little girls are unpredictable. Wait for me, Bud. I'll help. What are we going to do about it, Bud? Do? About what? It isn't fair. Father's been dreaming of a trip to Chicago for years. He and Mother need a change. Shrimp really tossed a monkey wrench in the machinery. She had us all fooled, that little faker. Bud, I've got an idea. We'll give up our weekend. We'll stay home with Kathy so Mother and Father can go to Chicago. I knew it. When you get that Joan of Arc look in your eyes, I'm in trouble. Oh, there goes Beaver Lake. And what about my trip with the Glee Club? I guess being noble is harder for a man. Okay, sis, let's go in and tell them. Bud, did you bring in the luggage? Mom, Betty and I would like to talk with you. Bud and I have an idea. We've decided to stay home with Kathy. We'll take care of her, Mom. We want you and Dad to make that trip to Chicago. You're both being sweet about this. We mean it, Mother. You and Father need some fun. Yeah, even parents are people. <laughs> but we couldn't deprive you of your own pleasure. Oh. Well, it doesn't seem fair. Anyway, I don't know about your father. We'll ask him. Bud! Bud? Right here, Dad. Where did you put the bags? Well, Dad, I, uh... <laughs> Poor Kathy. Is she still in her room, dear? Mm hmm All dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> well, Margaret, looks like we're going to have that quiet weekend after all. Father, you and Mother have got to make that trip. We'll make it all right. Next year. We want you to make it now, Dad. Bud and I are going to stay home with Kathy, Father. The children have offered to give up their weekends, dear. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's very generous. Who wants to ride on a crowded bus full of college kids, singing and laughing? It's so immature, so utterly infantile. Beaver Lake, fishing, swimming, canoeing all day. <laughs> if there's one thing I hate, it's routine. <laughs> Look, kids, I haven't seen such terrible acting since they did Charlie's Aunt at the PTA. <laughs> Holy cow. Children, you heard your father, and I agree with him. Betty. Bud, I think you're fine. 
But we couldn't enjoy ourselves at your expense. It uh, wouldn't work. It's Kathy's fault. I'd like to shake her. I'll get it. It's probably for me. Hello? Who? Oh. Kathy, telephone. Wouldn't you know, it's Maxine again. She really is a true blue pal. <laughs> Bud, where'd you put the luggage? I left it in the car, Dad. I thought you might change your mind. I'll get it. <sighs> Maybe it's for the best, Jim. Sure. We'll get there next year. What's the rush? Father, are you going to let Kathy tie up the phone all morning? Is she still yakking with Maxine? I'll talk to her. Never mind, Mother. She's coming now. She's carrying a suitcase. Kathy, where are you going? Over to Maxine's. I'm going to be a house guest. <laughs> but, Kitten, I, I thought you were homesick. I was, but I changed my mind. Well, it's a woman's prerogative, I guess. Goodbye, everybody. Here, let me open the door for you, Angel. Kathy, are you sure you won't be lonely? Oh, no, Mommy. Maxine's my friend. We've been through all that, honey. <laughs> Who are you waving at now? I'm saying goodbye to Teddy. Holy cow, waving goodbye to a teddy bear. <laughs> She's had it since she was a baby. Well, he's my friend, too. Goodbye, Teddy. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye dear. She'll be good. Well, that's that, I hope. She'll be all right now, Jim. I think so, too. Bud. Yeah, I know. Put the bags back in the car. I can't believe Kathy's really gone. All's well that ends well. Are you ready, Betty? Can we give you a lift, Princess? Oh, thanks, Father, but Ralph's taking me to the station. The bags are in the car, Dad. Thanks, Bud. Oh, that's Ralph now. What a horn. <laughs> Sounds like a lovesick moose. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Princess. Have fun. You too, Father. Goodbye, dear. Tell Ralph to be careful. Oh, Bud. I know. Carry Betty's bag out to the car. Hey, I've got an idea. Maybe Ralph can drive me over to Clint Taylor's. The gang's leaving from his house. Well, Ralph will be glad to. Boy, I've sure got a lot of stuff. Dad. I know. Help you carry it out to the car. <laughs> Serves me right. Are you sure you have enough clothes, Betty? I think so, Mother. My beige linen, that little peasant blouse. Perhaps just one warm thing, in case the weather changes. I've got my blue sweater. That's fine. Well, have a lovely trip, dear. Hey, Betty, come on. Your pumpkin coach is waiting, Princess. I only wish it were a car. <laughs> Goodbye, Father. Have a big time in Chicago. I'm coming. <sighs> <laughs> Alone at last. Oh, it's been a hectic morning. It's hard to believe we're practically on our way. Three glorious days. No cares or responsibilities. Mm, we're going to live it up. Every minute. Just the two of us. There's a little Italian restaurant, Margaret. The uh, studio, I think they call it. Margaret, what are you thinking about? Oh, Betty's blue sweater. I wonder if she really took it along. Margaret, the girl's singing with a glee club. She's not going to play ice hockey. <laughs> I suppose so. Jim. What is it now? Did Bud ever find those heavy wool socks? Oh, for Pete's sake. Uh, be patient with me, Jim. I'll only be a minute. I found Betty's blue sweater and Bud's heavy wool socks. What did you use, a divining rod? Be sensible, Margaret. The nights can get cool this time of year. Especially at Beaver Lake. Look, Bud's one half polar bear and the other half Eskimo. Those icy showers that kid takes? <laughs> okay. Well, let's take off. Uh, got everything? Uh, I think so. I uh, just remembered something, Margaret. Uh, be with you in a minute. I hope everything turns out all right. Why shouldn't it? Don't be a problem parent, honey. Don't be what Betty calls overprotective. I'll try. Good girl. Come on. Get in the car. Oh, let me have that package. No, no I'll just carry it. Nonsense. Give it to me. I'll put it in the trunk. Uh, Jim, no. Oh, oh. Now look what you've done. Betty's sweater and Bud's socks. For Pete's sake. 
I couldn't help it, Jim. Margaret, you can't live your children's lives for them. Have them, love them, and then leave them alone, I always say. I suppose you're right. Jim. Something wrong? There seems to be something furry under the seat. Oh, there. For goodness sake. Believe me, Margaret, it's nothing. It's Kathy's teddy bear. <laughs> oh, Jim. Well, the poor kid probably won't be able to sleep a wink without <laughs> it. Her first time in a strange house and all. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, first we'll drop off Kathy's teddy bear. Then let's take Bud's wool socks up to Beaver Lake. Good. We can stay at the lodge overnight. And tomorrow we can drive to Grantsville with Betty's sweater. Wonderful idea. Ah, oh, it's a lovely little college town. Besides, I'm looking forward to hearing Betty sing with the Glee Club. So am I. <laughs> Have them, love them, and then leave them alone. <laughs> Isn't that what you always say, Jim? Well, <laughs> you know something, Margaret? I guess we're both a couple of fakers. <laughs> And now, before our final surprise of the show, here's our friend Jim Anderson with some friendly advice. There are lots of things we don't admit to ourselves, aren't there? For example, when you're not sleeping well, when you're tired, nervous, maybe you won't admit the reason. Well, it could be coffee nerves. Yes, coffee nerves from the caffeine in coffee or tea. In that case, you ought to switch to Postum, caffeine-free Postum. I did, and I'm glad. Postum really works, because there's no caffeine in Postum. Of course, many people aren't bothered by caffeine. But if you are, if caffeine causes you sleepless nights or jittery nerves, take my tip, switch to Postum. Chances are you'll find you're sleeping better, feeling better than you have in years. Get a jar of instant Postum and see. like Beaver Lake with its crisp air scented with pine. And that's where we find Jim and Margaret taking it easy on the veranda of the lodge. Jim says, You know, Margaret, in a way I'm glad we didn't get to Chicago. I feel that way too. And it was nice to see Bud. Yeah. Good old Bud. Say, it is getting a little nippy, huh? I told you it would be cool. I'm glad we brought Bud his heavy socks. So am I. Jim... What have you got on your feet? Well, it's all right, Margaret. Bud said I needed his wool socks worse than he did. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. And Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Norma Jean Nilsson as Kathy, Jean Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, and Ted Donaldson. Ladies, for a happy family at the start of each day, start serving breakfast the Post-10s way. It's the handy, thrifty way to let everybody choose his own favorite cereal. Post-10s brings you ten individual packages of seven famous Post cereals. Raisin Bran... 40% Bran Flakes, Post Toasties, Grape Nuts, and Grape Nuts Flakes. And Post 10s is the only assortment with two leading sweet-coated cereals, popular new Crinkles, and delicious candy-coated Sugar Crisp. Try this popular assortment of famous Post cereals. Get Post 10s today. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Ben Gershman. This is Bill Foreman speaking. They're returning soon. Hear Fibber McGee and Molly on NBC.